Yeah. Look at somebody that said, to know God, to know God is to know his magnetic power. Yeah, when you think of a magnet, you, you think that it has power. How many believe that? Amen. You know, when we think of uh, things that we believe in that we can't see, magnetism is a power we can't see, but we know it exists. Ain't that right? Gravity is a power. That exists, <laughs> but we can't see. It has power, ain't that right? Wind is a power. Uh, that you see the end results when it's more than 80, 90, 120 miles per hour, it can be devastating. We can't see it, but we know when it listens upon the trees and upon the land. But I want to talk about the magnetism that God has put upon the earth. Oh, I went in the house looking for magnets today. Last night, I went looking for magnets, and, you know, I, I came up uh, with a magnet that just, that sticks. Come on, somebody. Look at somebody and say, you ought to stick with the Lord like the magnet stick to metal. Oh, my Lord. Y'all, 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 let me slow down here because I, I don't want to go too fast because it's important to understand that uh, a magnet ain't going to just stick to any, anything. Uh, I said magnet ain't going to stick to plastic. and ain't gonna, If you're phony, it ain't going to stick to wood. Come on, somebody. If you're pretending, it ain't going to just stick to anything. The clothes, it won't it'll just stick to wall. But if it finds some attraction... Are y'all with me right now? If it, if it finds something that, that can draw itself, come on, somebody. And I notice that uh, when you take two magnets and try to put them together, there's something about two magnets when you try to put them together, they got a way of trying to avoid each other. But the magnificent power is so great, they just can't help but just come together. I want, to know, I want you to know something. When God saved you, he magnetized you. I, I don't think y'all understand. When God, when God healed you, he magnetized you. Uh, whatever you need, all you got to do is just be drawn by the power of God. Uh, all you got to do is say, Lord, I'm, I'm like a magnet. I feel myself drawing. You, you didn't know it, but when you were walking around in this world unsaved, God had put his magnetism on you. God said, I'm going to draw them near if I have to use all my power. Oh, y'all ain't with me this morning. God got a way of drawing you even when you didn't want to come. God said, I got a way of drawing you and sticking you when you don't even know you've been stuck. Are y'all with me right now? Look at somebody and say, God magnifying power. Oh, my Lord. I, I said to myself, I got to bring some of my magnets to church. And, and, and this is a wonderful flashlight, but it has a uniqueness about it. Not only is it a light, you, you, you can deal with that. It has a source of light. Ain't that right? But the unique thing about that is it's also got a hanger. You can hang this. You don't hang it anywhere. But the unique thing about this is it's also magnified. It also can stick on the back. It's got a, a magnet. Ain't that kind of like heaven? He want to show you the light and keep you hanging? Come on, somebody, and magnify you that he might draw you in these last and evil days. You see, sometimes we just take what we see and what we're dealing with for granted. But I want you to understand something. I know it's a bright light. But I want you to understand something. It's God magnifying power that draws us. Somebody say amen. amen. You was out in the world of sin doing your thing. And the songwriter said, Jesus, keep me near the cross. You see, it was a cross that, that that magnetism came. It was the power of his death that drew you and me. Ain't that right? You didn't come on your own. Come on, somebody. Somebody said, I found Jesus. No, you didn't. He found you because you the one was lost. Jesus was never lost. And you ought to thank God for his magnificent power. Look at somebody. Oh, maybe the word magnetic kind of scares you, but if it wasn't for God, we'd be burnt up. Because not only did God put gravity in the world, but God put magnetism around the world. Magnetism that would keep the sun's solar rays from burning us up. 
a magnetism that will keep uh, all that's in the uh, stratosphere in place. Magnetism that will keep not only the moon at bay, but it also will cause the moon to spin and the earth to spin to give it a high tide and a low tide. Somebody say amen. The God we serve, in case you didn't know it, he's still in charge. Somebody say amen. You ought to stick to him like glue. You ought to stick to him like a magnet. Wherever you go, whatever you're dealing with, you have to thank God for the victory. Amen. You see, one thing you got to understand about what I'm trying to say here this morning is that if you've been magnetized by God, you've been drawn by God, whatever you need from God, God's got it. Amen. And that magnetism got a way of healing you when you need to be healed. Amen. Got a way of delivering you when you be, need to be delivered. Amen. It's got a way that just like the prophet, I've been called to motivate the people to repent. I've been called to preach the gospel because I've been energized and magnetized by the Lord's power. Amen. You have to thank God you've been magnetized. I know that God is a magnet power. Amen. It is a drawing power. A power that will draw you through everything you're going through. Ain't that right? Amen. Okay, you got the gist of that. Amen? So I want you to turn your Bibles to James, Brother James, over by the book of Revelation after Peter. You see, it was Jesus keep me near the cross. Huh. There's a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream that flows from Calvary's mountain. Amen. Ain't that right? Amen. So, Lord, keep us near. Amen. Keep us near. Yes, Somebody say, Lord, keep us near. Lord, keep us near. Near, the cross. near the cross. You see, you see, you and I need to understand one thing that in James chapter 4, we're going to be reading starting at the verse first. Be patient with me this morning that you understand that we're not just here by chance. You came against all the odds to be here this morning. The enemy didn't want you to show up because of the snow. He didn't want you to show up because of the rain. He gave all kind of poor excuses to you, and you were fell for that hokey doke. But many of you overcame. Uh, I didn't say the ones who are not here didn't overcome, because there are things that do come up, and you have to handle your business. I understand that, but it's important that you understand nothing shall be able to hold you back when your mind is made up Amen. that you're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Why? Because when God saved you, and when God sanctified you, and when God baptized you with the Holy Ghost and fire, he put a magnetic field in you. He put a power in you that will cause you to be drawn to him. How do I know this? Because Jesus said, my sheep. He said, my sheep, know my voice. You see, it's a magnetic voice that when he's speaking, it radiates through the hearts and souls of the people of God. And I don't care whether you go to Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, whether you're in California, you'll know God's word and you'll know God's voice because God never changes. Somebody say amen. Oh, the world is mad because they're being rebuffed. Because they ain't being able to spend that money like they got it. Don't get mad with me. Come on, somebody. Christmas is more. Even the little guy lying on Charlie Brown telling you what the meaning of Christmas is all about. Uh, you can't get mad if you ain't got no Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Don't get mad with me. If you can't get the toys and get in debt, thank God you ain't in debt. Somebody say amen. If you ain't out of debt, you ain't going to know what I'm trying to say. All I'm trying to say is get out of debt and stay out of debt. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, chapter 4 here, James, uh, the uh, uh, half-brother of Jesus, uh, the first bishop of Jerusalem, he was killed because of his stand. He took a faith trial. He took a trial and endured the faith that he was going through, the trial that tried to overcome him, but he was strong through the faith. And yet, even unto death, he remained faithful. He developed what they call an endurance. Look at somebody say, I have developed. Through this, through this magnetism, an endurance. endurance. You see, you got to endure regardless of what others may be doing. You got to endure regardless of what others may be thinking. There are others around you saying, I don't know if I can make it. You say you can make it if you try. It's important that you understand the first step in trying to do anything is that you got to start somewhere. 
Come on, somebody. It doesn't matter when you're trying to exercise, you go on a walking, whether you're fasting and praying, you got to start somewhere. And you have to thank God for his magnifying power. You see, he can be glorified, magnified. He can be magnetic. He can draw you. You can call closer to him. He can draw you closer. If you understand, all you got to do is make that first step. If you draw near to him, what happens when you get near, uh, 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 what happens when a magnet gets near metal? What happens? Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me on this? You know, there comes a time when you get so close. See, it don't feel like it's pulling right now. But the closer you get to the Lord, the closer you get to the Lord, what happens? You can feel this power. You can feel that power. Y'all don't think this is a magnet. You think I'm playing, huh? Uh-huh. You know it's real, don't you? Because it's a power that can't be seen with the naked eye. It's like God. You can't see him with the naked eye, but you see his handiwork amen. everywhere you go. Amen. You see his handiwork working in your life. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm trying to get you to understand where I'm going with this. You know, the God we serve, if he didn't know all about magnetism, why would he create it? Next time you get a couple of magnets, you try to put them together. Come on, somebody. You're going to find there's a certain resistance. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Ain't but one God. And he said, there is no other God. There won't be one before me, and there's one not coming after me. Somebody say amen. You can look, and you can look high, and you can look low. Come on, somebody. You can look here and look there, but you will find out there is no other God. But the God we serve got a certain magnetism about him. Don't you love the power of his Holy Spirit? Don't you love the power of him drawing you closer? What I love about a magnet is that when you get hooked on the Lord, it's tough to pull away. Oh, uh, y'all ain't with me right now. I said when you get hooked on the Lord, <laughs> you try to pull away. You know why he said that? He said because when, when God called you and saved you, he said no man, no man can pluck you. No man. No devil, no demons, no hell, no death, no life, no sickness, no affliction. Nothing can pull you away from the power of God. You ought to give God the praise for his magnificent power, for his healing power to deliver you each and every day of your life. I'm going to dawn on you. I know sometimes I... You know, I act like a little kid and a wife sometimes say, won't you stop, William? I say, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> See, I ain't going to lose my youthfulness because you're as old as you think, not as old as you feel. Amen. Okay, I'm going to get on your nerve right now. You see, you, see, you, see, you see, this gave me my sermon being a childlike because I was saying, Lord, what do you want me to preach about? I could go right back to the message you told me, take a stand. He said, no, I'll put that on hold. I got something for you. I said, what is it, Lord? He said, you're drawing near to me. But you didn't realize when you got near to me, you got so close that I just magnetized you. You magnetized me? Don't you realize that when you got a charisma? Hey, hey, hey! Some of y'all got charisma, don't even know it. You got magnetized, you got magnetized and power. Oh, let me get on your nerve. Oh, if Teddy Pendergrass showed up in here and said, turn out the light, oh, you're going to have some magnetism in a minute. Oh, you're going to get all happy if Anita Baker says something real sweet to you. Come on, somebody. Oh, you will melt like butter. Come on, somebody. Where's my bread? That's the side I want it on. I know what I'm talking about. There's some people that got charisma. They got magnetism about them. They can draw all kind of people. That certain women got magnetism. Come on, somebody. I ain't talking about they're fine to the nine. I'm talking about they got something in there. That, you know, some women got, they got class and style. Now, all women don't have class, and all women ain't got style. But it's rare that a woman got class and style. Amen. Oh, y'all don't hear me talking now. You ain't hear me talking right now. What you saying, Pat? I'm saying about magnetism. They got a way they can draw them in. Yes. Come on, somebody. Make him once look, twice look, three times and run into a pole. <laughs> okay, never mind, never mind. If they take that same magnetism when God saves them, the same men that get drawn to them, they can draw them to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. 
You see, you can take what God gave you and let God get the glory out of it. Okay, all right, let me get to the message. Y'all, y'all, y'all know, you know, when I come at you at the uh, oblique from a different angle, you kind of look at me, where is he going with this? I'm trying to get you to understand, he says in chapter 4 here of St. James about endurance. From, he said, from him whence cometh wars and fighting among you. Why are people always fussing and fighting, yeah. carrying on a started mess? He says, come they, ne- uh, they not hence even of your lust, the result of wars is lust. Lust for power, lust for land, lust for this and lust for that. Even of your lust, that war is in your members. They're in your being. Sometimes your bladder fight with your, come on somebody. (laughs) Come on, your kidneys, come on somebody. And then way on down further, you got a problem when it goes to the bathroom if you don't go when you're supposed to go. Oh, I, I'm, I'm talking to you right now. There's a problem with your ears sometimes. Uh, hear things that your eyes didn't see. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me right now. There's always a war in your member before it can leave my lips and touch your ear. The devil got in between and twist the word, and they say something you didn't even say. Okay, never mind, never mind. You, you know, there's a war in your memory. I'll just leave it at that because you, you have to dig deep into these scriptures and go behind and see what is Paul trying to say to you and me. In verse 2, he says, ye lust and have not. Mm-hmm. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to, to have and cannot obtain. Why? Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Mm-hmm. What are you trying to say, Paul? Paul said in verse 4, ye are adulterers and adulteress. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. It's an enemy of God. Being friends with the world, you got to wear this world in a loose garment. Come on, somebody. And when you've been magnetized by God, you ain't got to worry about what the world is doing because your magnification, come on, somebody, your glorification is in the body of Christ. Amen. He says in verse 5, do not think that the scripture... You see, when you're friends with the world, you're enemies of God. Verse 5 says, do you think that the scripture, the scriptures say in vain? No. That the spirit that dwell in you and me lusts to envy. It's just something in us. See, some people don't like to be told that, you know, because I'm all holy and righteous. I don't have to lust after nobody. You see, you got to work on yourself every day. You got to work on your mind every day. You got to work on your spirit every day. You got to be motivated to repent every day. You got to ask God for direction every day. You got to cry out by your affliction every day. Every day you're going through something. The closer you get to the Lord, the closer you get to Him, you can feel His magnificent power. And you begin to feel the magnification. And once you're stuck on the Lord, you don't have to worry about pulling back. Just stay connected. Verse 60 says, verse 6 says, and but he giveth more grace. You have to thank God even though that spirit of lust is in us. Yeah. He says, but he giveth more grace. Why do we give more grace? Wherefore, he said, God resists the proud, but he give grace to the humble. Look at somebody say, you and I, look at him. Look at him. Don't be looking at me. How does it look at them? As you look at me, you don't want to look at me. You want to look around. So you and I need to have more grace and be more humble. Because, see, we, we want to be in charge. We want to call it, and that's when lust get in, and envy get in, and jealousy get in, and war, and all kind of things get in. That's when adulterers show up, and adulterers show up. All kind of issues pop up, and you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, Paul said, I want you to understand one thing. When you ask, you ask to miss. You don't even ask for the right thing when you're praying for the right thing. But he'll give grace. He said, resist. God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. Yeah. Verse 7 says, submit yourself. Submit yourself, therefore, to who? God. To, to man? God. 
He says, submit yourself to God. And if you submit yourself, if you humble yourself before God because of this magnetism, you got a connection that the devil can't get in between the power of God and the magnetism you have. You can resist the devil, and when you resist him, he will flee. You have that power and that connection that you are connected that when you resist him, he has no choice but to flee. Now, 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 this is a little magnet. Yes, the more you know the word, the bigger your magnification get. Amen. The more power you get. Yes, right. Are y'all with me on this? Yes, and the devil don't have nothing. You ever seen these, these powerful magnets that pick up cars before they crush them? Y'all yes. yes. don't know what I'm talking about? Yes. You ever been to the junkyard and they got this magnet so powerful that, that if you're around a car, it'll pick the whole car up off the ground and take it to the crusher. And the only way that car will be released is a man cut the magnetism. That's right. Yep. Amen. The devil is trying to get at your magnetism. He's trying to get at your praise. He's trying to get at your worship. He's trying to get at your, how you go about serving the God in the beauty of holiness. Yes, yes, yes. Don't you understand what God is trying to do for you this morning? He's trying to get you to be all magnetized. You see, when you've been magnetized, come on, somebody, you can go out and magnetize others. If you resist the devil, it ain't no doubt about it in my mind. Look at somebody and say, if you resist the devil, don't be scared to look at him. Don't be scared. You can't be scared of the devil. You can't be scared of Satan. Come on. If you're scared, you got troubles all the way around. He says, resist the devil. And he will, and he will flee, flee from, from you. From you. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. You can tell the devil he's a liar. He knows he's a liar. He don't like being told he's a liar. You can resist him in the name of Jesus. And if he don't respond right away, you say the blood of Jesus. Amen. You got all this magnetism. This spiritual charisma that God has given you to draw others to the body of Christ. Amen. Oh, I know a man is without honor even in his own household. You got some brothers and sisters. They know you saved because you don't do the things they used to do. They know you ain't into what they used to do. Come on, somebody. Uh, so they treat you a little different. Come on, somebody. They, they look at you and they, they think about how they can, they can do you harm even though they came from the same line into the stomach. Amen. Amen. They say, go ahead on. I'll see you some other time. But if you say, I want to go out partying, what time do you want to pick me up? <laughs> you go out and let's do some heavy duty partying and drinking. What time do you want to ball? Oh, there used to be, some of y'all used to be the biggest shot caller and the biggest ballers. Now look where God got you. Oh, all magnetized. And that's why when you're, when you're magnetized, that's why when you go out and you know you ain't got nowhere, no business being where you got, you can feel the magnetism pulling on you, telling you you ain't got no business being there. You show up at the Christmas party, come on somebody. Oh, I never will forget. I remember uh, one time I was working in Madison Park, and, and, and in this very room, they were giving a big Christmas party. And God bless his soul, oh, Lorenzo Hooker, God bless his soul, he, he come with me with a glass of eggnog. And he, he had spiked it, and I tasted it and said, this is pretty good. Before I know it, I was tipsy. <laughs> And I realized that he didn't play a dirty trick. And I could see them laughing at me. So when I tell you to be careful when somebody hand you something, because you don't know what they put in it. Amen. And you might not be able to handle. Come on, somebody. You may put something in your drink. You pour off all your clothes, saying it's getting hot in here. Pastor, wait a minute. Where are you going with this? I'm trying to get to a point here. A point is that you understand in verse 8, he said, if you, in verse 8, is my key verse. Verse 8 is my key verse. Everybody read it out loud. One, two, three. What did 
does it mean, Pastor? What does it mean to draw near? In order for you to be drawn near, something got to draw you. In order for you to get close to the Lord, something got to draw you. Something got to pull you. Something got to get you stuck. Come on, somebody. It's got to be a magnetism that, that got power that would, that, 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 you know, this, this pole want to let go, but the magnetism says you ain't going nowhere. Come on now. Amen. You got to thank God that God got a power and a pull on your life yeah. that even when you're going out of the way, God got a spirit that gently, I did use the word gently, bring you back into the sheepfold. Come on, somebody. Yeah. If you got to come hollering and dragging and screaming and fighting for the Holy Spirit to pull you back, you got trouble. Yeah. You ought to praise God for him drawing you back Amen. to a place where you could have went astray, to a place where you could have lost your life. He said if you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. If you learn in the process of drawing, cleanse your hands, mm -hmm. signifying cleanse your heart, yes. ye sinners. Yes. Take a moment to purify your hearts, Amen. ye that are unstable. Yes. You ain't sure if God can do this. I don't know about you, but you got problems if you're not sure mm -hmm. if God can do this. Yes. You don't think God can do that? Mm -hmm. You name it, and God can do it. Whatever's going on in your life, God can fix it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with, God can fix it. Somebody say amen. amen. It doesn't matter what the issues are in your life, God can fix it. Amen. When you pray the right prayer mm -hmm. and believe with the right faith, yes. God can fix it for you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't have to pray a mess. You ain't got to worry about uh, getting it in there and using it for another purpose. God got a reason for it. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that, you know, uh, the wise men, the magis, uh, I got to study in this, and Minister Green, it took me to a place that I didn't think I was going. I was all out in the orbit. And I realized that between 2 and 7 B.C., there was a celestial alignment with Earth, Saturn and Jupiter. See, y'all going there now. And somewhere between this alignment, God brought forth a star that the Magi's are the wise men from the east, which was almost between 500 and 1,000 miles away from Bethlehem. And they followed this star for several months and it led them down to Bethlehem. And when they got these magis, these rich men, these rich kings, now many of you think it was three because of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Okay. But when the king of the universe arrived, everybody going to know about it. Especially if they're magis and they're kings from afar. Amen. These kings came from a place better known to you and I as Iran and Iraq. And they came a distance across the land with a caravan all the way down to Bethlehem because word got to them that there was going to be a new king in town. Amen. Okay, okay, you read this story before. Old little town of Bethlehem. You ever heard that? You know that song. So they follow this, this bright star that God lined up the planet to shine right down on Bethlehem. Now David was born in Bethlehem. And when word got around to Herod, that the Magi from the Far East had made a journey for several months following this star, it was the shepherds that spotted the same star. Well, I got around that he was down in Bethlehem. So Herod called the elders and the scribes and all the rulers to tell me who is this king. And they said, according to the prophet, 
He's going to be born in Bethlehem. Now think about this for a minute. Born in Bethlehem, but raised in Nazareth. Okay. <clears throat> These wise men talked to Harad. And Harad was so wicked, he killed off all the offspring that had access to the throne. It didn't matter whether there was children, brothers, or relatives. If they threatened this throne, they were destroyed. Are y'all with me on this? Amen. It's important that you know that you know the Lord for yourself. Amen. And that magnification is an individual stick to this. Everybody say, I'm going to stick, I'm going to stick. With, the Lord. with the Lord. You see, Hurrah said, I'm going to have to do something about this new king. So he told the Magi, these, these men, when you find him, because I heard y'all going down to Bethlehem to find him. When you find him, bring me word back so I can come down and worship him, lying devil. Come down and worship him myself. You know the story. It's a Christmas story. But in more detail than that. So in his mind, it gives me an opportunity to find out who this child is. And if he's going to be a king, I need to get rid of him. You see, the devil have no need for you. When he capture you, uh, take your magnetism away. When he take your salvation away. When he try to rob you of your righteousness and your loving kindness towards the Lord, he seek to destroy you. Why? Because the Bible is very clear. Paul said he only come to kill, steal, or destroy. Look at somebody said, you better fight for all you know. Herod was sitting waiting. And the Bible said when, when these, these Magi's left Herod and they went down to Bethlehem, the Bible said there the saw that lie, led and guide them. Now, you have to understand with a frame of mind. Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever been out on a day when you saw the sun shine through the cloud and it looked like it was shining especially on somebody? You ever seen that? Now, you need to understand something. God can flip the script because this was at night and God allowed the light to shine through the darkness right down on Bethlehem. And it was the Magi's and the shepherds and all those who had a right magnetism, a right pulling by this salvation to be drawn to the Lord. Oh, I know you ain't heard this Christmas story like this because, you see, I'm adding things that you can see it. And that what you didn't say when they found him, they found him based on what the scripture said, he would be wrapped yes. and swallowing clothes. Yes, he won't be in no baby bed, but he'll be laying in the manger. Yes, Are y'all with me on that? Yes, and were prophesied hundreds of years yes, before Jesus came onto the scene, yes. what was going to take place, and it came to pass. Now, these Magi's, Junior, I mean, I ain't never, no time in Scripture, ever known Jesus was poor. Come on, Amen. 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 Wait a minute now. He was born in Bethlehem, but he was raised in Nazareth. Come on now. And Nazareth was the poor side of town. But when these Magi shows up, I said Magi's. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about plural here. There was more than three. There was men of great accomplishment Amen. that showed up with gold. Come on now. So Jesus, before he can take the path and suck it, he was already rich. You see, God will provide for you, and God will provide for me. All you got to do is stay connected. Jehovah, Jireh, the Lord will provide. When I say God will provide, even if God have to improvise, regardless of how he do it, you're going to get what God has for you. Regardless of how he work out the detail, God can fix it. Then they say, wait a minute, he got gold? And the other magi showed up and said, we brought him something. 
We know how important that the frank incense that burns upon the altar because the, the, the frank incense are like the prayers of the saints. And they brought bags of frank incense. I like jasmine. Are y'all with me on this? I like a little cinnamon too. And I, I like to burn them outside when I'm having cookouts to get in the mosquito eyes because he's a blood sucker. The devil's a blood sucker. He's trying to steal your joy. He's trying to paralyze your salvation. He's trying to get you from worshiping God. Are y'all with me? I hope the smoke get in the devil's eye. I hope the prayer that he look at that he can't do nothing about it. And what I love about the others that showed up, they had to be real careful with their cargo because it was mirth. Mirth is a fragrance oil. Oh, y'all ain't with me. I, I got some mirth in my bag. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Y'all say, I wonder why pastor smells so good. I want y'all to take a smell of that mirth and pass it around. Some of y'all going to look at it and see what he been smelling. I might get me some of that. That's that holy mirth oil. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Wait until it get to you, and then you say, oh, yeah, I know it. Keep on passing it. Get a good sniff of it. You might not want to smell it, but see, oil stay on the skin a long time. It, you see, in, in the day when I came along, we didn't, we didn't have a lot of money to buy no royal crown. Are y'all with me? So even cooking grease, come on somebody, some fat bag grease would do the trick because you can put all, well, all that away of solidifying and not only solidifying your, your, your cells, but regenerating your cells. All was good to burn. All was good to cook with. All was good to use with. If you think I'm making it up, you go and ask the owners of Olive Oil. Amen, amen. You go and ask Johnson and Johnson about Johnson baby oil. Oh. Are y'all with me on this? The smell is so powerful. Just keep adding around because I want it back. You're going to get your own. Come on, somebody. See, all is good and it lasts longer on the skin. Unlike perfume, they evaporate. All stay there. But when they brought the gold, the frank incense, and the myrrh, it was a sin and all, an aroma, because the Bible said Jesus is a sweet smelling Savior. Amen. 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 How many believe he's sweet? I know he is. I know he is. You see, it's important that you understand, because I'm going to have to finish in a minute, but I want you to understand something real clearly here this morning, that, that though Jesus was down in the, in the manger, the Bible said that God sent a dream to Joseph, his, his father, and told him to leave uh, Bethlehem and to go down to Egypt, and according to Scripture, that it might be feared, I will call my son up out of Egypt. Because God knew what was in the mind of Harad. Right. And what was in the mind of Harad was a wicked deed. The Bible said, we're prophesied by the prophet Jeremiah that there will come a cry out of the limitation out of Bethlehem so loud that will cause Rachel to bow over and to bend over and cry. And you're in a bow because Harad has set a mandate to destroy all the newborn from the age of two years to the newborn. Two and under. Can you imagine slaughtering all the children in Bethlehem at the age of two and under? Can you imagine the cry of the mothers and fathers hollering and screaming, trying to get them to let their child go, and yet the child ripped in half because of spears and knives, stabbed and cut to death, and all that was on Harar's head. And let me just tell you something in case you don't know about it. Don't nothing pass God's eyes that he don't see. Don't nothing pass God's eyes that he don't see. Nothing don't pass God. She know how it smells because she, she know how. You want to be like Jesus, you want to be a sweet smelling, a born again, you have to get some anointing on. 
Oh, come on, somebody. See, see, sometimes y'all hear me say things. I know exactly what I'm talking about. You might not know, but I know what I'm talking about. The Bible said, oh, Lord, turn into a madman. He was rose with the magi because he was marred by them, but he sent death down the aisle. And dad was killing children here, killing children there. If somebody showed up to kill your grandchild or your child uh, two years or under, you're going to fight them yes. to the death. Amen. Look at the sacrifice these children made because of the life of Christ. But I can tell you all those children that got killed, they gained their life in eternal life. You understand? It don't tell you how many children that were slaughtered at this time. But you need to understand, Jesus had to be gone. Yes, God. And God told Joseph, go down to Egypt. And when I, when I destroy her yes, I'll tell you when to come back. Yes, now, you may think God forgot about her but he didn't. Are y'all with me on this? Amen. If I were you, I wouldn't be messing with God. Oh, you can play with me, you can play with the church, you can play with one another, but I wouldn't play with God. Because once you've been magnetized, God knows all about your magnetism. He knows all about your comings and goings. He knows what you need before you ask him. And the Bible says he would deal and give you abundantly more than you can ask. More than you can think. Before you can get it on your radar, before you can get it, come on, somebody. You're living in a time, and there's, 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 there's a red cross, there's a blue cross, there's a crossover, there's a double cross. But well, I'm going to keep trusting in the cross that Christ died on. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying Harab was so wicked. That when God touched him with a sickness, he had a death that what we call intestinal itching. That come from drinking so much that you drink the lining of the inside walls of your intestines. He wound up with Crohn's disease. So painful so problematic that it affect his breathing. So bad that his breathing, it caused him to, to uh, convulsions. He was passing out and getting up and passing out. Got so bad that that didn't stop his strong sexual desire. He developed what they call VD, a venereal disease. Many said it was the gonorrhea. Connected with syphilis. It created gangrene of his intestinals. And of his uh, scrotum. I'll put it that way. I, I'll, I'll make it plain so you won't misunderstand. It got all in his private part and it turned gangrene. God ate him up. Inside and out. For the wickedness that he done to those children. Now I could have painted you a different picture, but I'm trying to be. Because if you ain't never seen gangrene, if you ain't never seen what gangrene can do, Lord have mercy. If you ain't never seen what pus in the rotting flesh, no healing that the doctors don't even waste their time trying to give you some antibiotic. They say, give me my scalpel. I'm going to measure once, and I'm going to measure twice, and I'm going to cut once. Are y'all with me on this? I'm trying to paint a picture so you understand. Ain't a doctor, a radiologist, a specialist, no one on a PhD in their specialty can help this man. Because what he done, the evil he done, on the birth of Christ. So let the world talk about Jingle Bell and Santa smell. 
and Rudolph lost his way. Let him tell you about all this and about all that, about how to gain wealth and fame and fortune in these last and evil days. Time is running out, saints. Amen. Look at somebody that says, I don't know about you, but I'm going to stay magnetized. I'm going to stick to Jesus like he stuck to me. And I ain't going nowhere because he's going to draw me wherever he goes. Are y'all with me on this? I don't care if you're down on the street. Draw me, Lord. Draw me near. 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 My Lord close to thee. Look at somebody and say, don't ever Lose your childlike ways. You see, because God can give you something when you're humble. Because sometimes we get so grown, we lose our way. Come on, somebody. We got how important it is to appreciate life. And sometimes God will send you a laugh. I said, sometimes God will send you a laugh. And ain't talking about being a laughing ministry. I'm talking about laughing because your heart may be heavy. Yeah. Only God can fix it if it wants to be fixed. Amen. Whatever you're going through in life, God can fix it for you. You believe that this morning? Amen. You believe that this morning? Amen. And let me just say this here so you don't misunderstand me. Those wise men, Junior. Those magis that were seeking Jesus. And they found him because they was magnetized. And just in case you didn't know it, wise men still seek him today. Amen. I said wise men still seek him today. There's a lot of people seeking what's happening in Washington and what's happening on the Capitol and what's happening downtown, but they're not seeking the Lord. Amen. They, got, they, got the, they got the radio station, Minister Green, W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? They, they didn't turn to the, what's in it for me? W never mind, never mind. Y'all don't understand where I'm coming from. Uh, you ought to know me better than that. Let me just say this in, in closing. God who sees all. I say, everybody say, God is a keeper, God is a keeper of, his words. of his words. Look at somebody else and say, God, God is, a is a keeper of his words. He's going to have his angel and his spirit to watch over his word because he said it and he's backing off not one minute. God spoke it and God is able to perform what he spoke. He watched over his words to see they are performed and brought the pass. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Away in a manger. No crib or a bed, the little Lord Jesus lay down his feet. Come on, stand on your feet. Look down where he lay, the little Lord Jesus asleep on the Away in a manger, no crib for a The little Lord Jesus lay down his The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The You know, he's not in the manger no more. He's not on the cross no more. He's not in the grave no more. Well, come on, somebody. See, a lot of people want to keep him in the manger. Some people want to keep him on the cross. 
He's long since left the manger, long since left the cross. Amen. Amen. He's no longer in the grave. Amen. Oh, you don't have to say amen. You see, you and I need to understand one thing about the Lord. God don't want you to stay the same. So that means there's going to be a change. And the change is to bring you up higher. I use the phrase, he wants to magnetize you. And the more powerful the magnet, or the bigger the magnet, the more power the magnetism. And you don't know how God is going to use you. You got friends that are your friends because you through your walk in Christ has magnetized them. They're like precious metal that a magnet will draw. So it sounds like a simple child schoolyard dream, playing with magnets on the back porch. But in reality, God has got a pull on your life. You are a sheep and a sheep begotten sheep. It provides meat, shelter, and clothing. God is trying to make a way where there is no way. He may not always be where you want him. I said he may not be always where you want him. You might be here, there, anywhere, and he might not always be where you want him, but I learned one thing, God is always on time. Bow your heads with me. Bow your heads with me. I know some of your hearts are troubled this morning. I can pick it up in my spirit. You see, being a pastor, it ain't just setting up rooms and preaching. It's also about deserting the saints' hearts. And because I choose not to share information, don't mean I don't know what's going on. And a lot of times, God will show you something and you want to brush it away like a net in your ear. But I've learned, and I've yearned through my life walk, that whenever God speak, to listen is to be obedient. To listen is to be obedient. And when you obey what God is telling you to do, you're going to have a fulfilled life. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow here with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul, and that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins, and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area, and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.